this is Pat Love back with Pat's Two Cents. I believe this is the last one for the night. Now, we're going to show the contrast between strength and weakness while we're going through hell while under the attack of the enemy. I want you to hear this. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. Followed by Pat's two cents. Here we go. <laughs> and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Mm. Powerful words, powerful decision. But let me tell you, sometimes, this is Pat's two cents now, sometimes what we don't realize is that we are placed in a scenario, an ugly one. And what God is doing is showing off and at the same time showing us some things as well. Now, sometimes the ones that are the most gifted, the ones that are more highly skilled, that have made the greatest achievements spiritually, mentally, emotionally, possibly even educationally, or vocationally, whatever the case may be. But God has put a lot in your account, your personal account, not your bank account, your personal account. Now, the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. And see, what he had gone through was a lot of revelations and all kind of things, experiences that some of the other disciples didn't have. Now, whatever your case is, while you're going through, trust me when I say this, God is not only strengthening you, girding you up, and, and, and uh, honing you, but he's also pulling you back. The way that a rider pulls back the reins on a horse so that the horse doesn't get beside itself and ends up running too fast for its own good. Sometimes we run too fast and God has to put a, 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 a hold on us and slow our behinds down before we get ahead of ourselves and God. You hear what I'm saying? I hope you're really understanding what I'm saying. God is all, all, oftentimes using one blade to cut 10 or 15 different ways. He's not only working on your enemy. He's not only defending you. He's not only teaching you something. He's not only strengthening you on the inner man, but he's also skimming off the scum from your spirit, the scum from your emotions, the scum from your mindsets. He is always multitasking when you go through a trial. He's accomplishing, he's removing, he's pruning, he's gouging out, he's doing surgery, he's revealing, he's teaching, I mean, so many things. So understand that when Romans 8 says all things work together for them who love God 
and who are called according to his purpose. When things seem like they're getting out of control, what's going on, Lord? What is his answer? My grace is sufficient for you. You relax. I know what I'm doing. I'm not going to let this kill you. I'm not going to let this destroy you. Even if you lose the battle, I, for your sake, have won the war because I know what I've got planned down the road for you. And if you're still connected to this, you can't get to that because you won't be in position to see it coming. So when I say God is always doing a lot of things, he is. And trust me, it's for your good. It's for all of our good when God is working us through through the woodshed. And we hate it. And we would be crazy if we didn't. And God knows and understands it. But he will not put on you more than you can bear. When you look back 10 years, you look back down the road to this moment in your life. It will make sense to you. That's why they say hindsight is 2020. You will understand why God had to take you that way. To get you over to the other side. You'll understand it. It's like watching a game of chess. And you, you're in it. But then when you, you figure out. How did I lose that? How did I win that? How did you replay the whole thing on video. And you're like. Oh yeah that, he, yeah, that was being set up. You will understand what God's handiwork was about. For your sake. So don't lose heart right now. You may not smell like a winner. You may not look like a winner. You may not quack like a winner. And you may not waddle like a winner. But trust me when I say. God's got your goodies. On the other side of this thing. And when you get to that other side, you will understand why you needed to build up mental, emotionally, um, emotional, spiritual stamina and muscle for the task, for the assignment he has for you. You had to go through this just like a salmon has to swim upstream to build up the strength to spawn. There is something that God is birthing from you. Something he's, 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 he has imparted to you. You need the strength to conceive. Oh, thank you, Lord. I had a friend. This, oh, this great point. Great example. Listen, I had a friend who never in, indulged in sports never engaged in sports wasn't into it and she and I were about the same size but I was extremely athletic I played racquetball almost every day rode my bike for miles I walked for four to six miles a day I was swimming I was doing the whole nine yards just because I loved it it didn't make me small but I was in good shape now on her side she ended up getting pregnant by her husband she was ready to conceive i mean ready she conceived she was ready to give birth help me lord it's late okay she was ready to give birth and yeah my age is showing right now <laughs> and when during the time that she and i would go to the racquetball club i mean the racquetball courts before she got pregnant we would be playing racquetball. Well, I was basically playing myself because this is how sad she was. I love her now, you know. But listen, some people are like this when it comes to sports. If the ball doesn't come right to you, the ball's just going to be missed because some of you won't even put the effort forward to reach out to get it. 
I was a hustler. I would skin my knee and be bleeding and everything trying to get that killer so I could win that shot and get that point. Not that it mattered, but when you have that athletic and competitive mindset, you hustle. You do whatever you got to do. Well, she didn't have that mindset, and as a result, her body was weak. I'm making a point, so don't go and turn on a TV program. You got to hear this. Her body was weak in a lot of areas. When we were at church, when she was about to give birth, fast forward now, she's about to give birth. They send a note, Pastor Cushman has to stop his sermon because it's a matter of life and death. Her blood pressure is dropping rapidly and everybody hits the altar and we cry out to God to spare her life. And God did. Whew. I mean, miraculously. But what they said the problem was that led to that, she had no abdominal muscle power. She had no physical stamina. She had no strength to push and give birth. So at the last minute, they had to cut her open and do the cesarean. And now her life was at risk because everything was going cuckoo while they were doing this. Had she been able to give birth, that wouldn't have even come, that wouldn't have even happened. That problem wouldn't even have even uh, 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 arisen. You hear what I'm saying? So sometimes God has to build you up. To give you the stamina, the strength, the core, oh my goodness, the, the core power to handle what he has ahead of you. And it's mighty, it's beautiful, it's powerful, but you have to be empowered all along the way. And most muscle buildup comes through resistance. I'm going to leave you with that. You take that to the Lord. But know that however this little immediate thing turns out, it's all part of a big plan. So don't look at it as you losing or God forsaking you. That's not what's happening. Sometimes a parent allows a child to get in a fight and get a bloody nose and a black eye because that parent knows at one point that child is going to get tired and they're going to learn to rise up on their own defense. So God knows what he's doing. I am telling you, don't take it as a punishment. Don't take it as abandonment. God, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. He is wiser beyond any man's knowledge. Trust him through this. No matter what, trust him and keep your joy. And if you're having a problem keeping it, ask God to minister joy and peace to you while you're going through. He will. God bless you.